Welcome back to the Spizzalock, the Pokemon challenge where for every video I beat one Pokemon game with my crazy rule set. Link in description for the series playlist as well as a short video explaining the rules. And we are here on the final episode of Gen 2. If you're new here, the TLDR is we had a horrible first leg, but we were up in the second leg. Don't lie, don't lie to me. Slicer X, I'm looking at you. But of course, I'm gonna stop delaying the fun stuff. No long spiel this time. Let's get right into the final episode of Saga 2. We take a peek at our team who has carried us through the Johto region and say hello to Star Platinum the third. Ronaldo the third, Quandale the third, Jonah Hill the fourth, Slicer X the sixth, and of course, an egg. I already made this joke, I'm sorry. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Anyway, you've seen it all twice before, so long story short, we made our way right to the gym leader after some off-screen grinding and got to work. Like the sixth, our beautiful baby girl is against a rabid street pigeon, so we give it the good old Joe Swanson. <laughs> after handling it with a couple thunder shocks, it faints, and Pidgeotto comes out. I switch in fear of this cheater superior base stats to the wall standing tall Kabuto as it chews on some mud slaps while dishing out some scratches in return. But I guess Adam Conover over here is in his talents before coming to this debate because we were getting our asses kicked so I had to switch yet again and send out Quandale who uses the combined power of supersonic and leech life aka our poor man's toxic stall and secure our first badge we made our way to Bugsy and proceed to shred his underlings once again with Jonah Hill but after doing this twice before Jonah Hill simply wasn't happy with it anymore he lost his sense of fulfillment in terrorizing small town wildlife so I took him to the forest next door and let him go nuts until he evolved. We then made our way to send our goodbyes to Bugsy, but of course he couldn't let us go without one more battle. Metapod and Kakuna are one tapped with Ember, and instead of playing it safe, we blitzed Scyther before Fury Cutter could be a threat and started to make our way to Goldenrod. We did some training against Whitney's fangirls and got Ronaldo to evolve into Quagsire, and after an insane amount of cardio, my Pichu finally decided to evolve. I did some deep breathing and meditation to mentally prepare myself for the anguish to come, and I started the battle. I made a risky play considering our previous runs. What? No, dude! And sent out light against Miltank's minion, who used double slap as we paralyze it. We follow up with a sweet kiss and switch to Ronaldo. The fairy hits herself and we hit slam, getting it into the red. It hits us with a pitiful double slap and we spritz it with water for the KO. Miltank comes out and we spam flash, but we keep getting unlucky, failing, flinches, all while Miltank's damage gets higher and higher. We get to low yellow and decide to bring out Star Platinum, who dodges a stomp and sweeps Miltank's legs for some huge damage. Star Platinum then taps into Ultra Instinct, dodging every blow Miltank has to offer as he KOs with the karate chop we give our teammates a quick change of pace by letting them pick their choice of kimono girl for, for battle the anyway we made our way to this burning tower because 25 percent more story and fell into a hole where three beasts awaited us or not i guess because they ran away as we journeyed forward morty was coming up and we still didn't have a reliable dark type move wielder nor were we ready to use ghastly in this run after what happened in leg four's morty battle quandale saw this issue and looked around the team seeing members who through this leg alone had stepped up their game and pushed their limits in order to defeat these gym leaders more safely and efficiently. And wanting to improve and carry their weight on the team, Quandale entered Morty's gym and took the challenge head on. After some more rigorous cardio outside the gym, Quandale had went from a Zubat to a Crobat in a shocking amount of time. We face Morty and Oko Ghastly, and he tries the same on Haunter, but it barely clings on and retaliates with a futile nightshade. Before it's sent back to the ball. Gengar comes out and we confuse Riot, then hit with a bite after it hits itself. Gengar flinches and we finish it with a crit bite. Haunter's out last, and I have a feeling it already knew its fate was sealed as all it did before it fell was use its fight, not even inflicting damage to Quandale D. Goat as we secure our fourth badge. Now, of course, if you've seen the last two episodes, which, by the way, if you've made it this far and haven't, friendly reminder, I have literally five whole episodes before this and a video explaining the rule set. So go check that out to see how this run in my style as a YouTuber has evolved over time until now. Anyway, as I was saying, we know that Thunderstones are hard to come by in this region, but, um, if you, uh, if you, uh, if you know the right people and, uh, willing to get your hands dirty, you, uh, you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. <laughs> Late of all. Oh hey, and so did Star Platinum. Anyway, we journeyed out to sea, got medicine for Jasmine, and faced her off one final time. This one's for Lola, you sick fuck. Star Platinum crushed both Magnemites against his head like two cans of Bud Light and faced off against Jasmine's Alaskan Bullworm. That... 
That sounded wrong. I need to get off the internet. Helix and Machoke clash Karate Chop and Iron Tail, and the battle is off to a good start. We use Low Kick, doing way less damage than I intended for, but securing a flinch in the process. We Karate Chop and get the crit Oko. Chuck's up next, and Star Platinum was just warming up, and he proves that by doing about two-thirds of Primate's health in a single hit. Primate uses Leer to, I don't know, set up for Polyrath. W teammate, bro, I can't even be mad at that. But anyways, Polyrath comes out after we effortlessly crush Primeape. And I guess you could say he was ready to unleash his Polyrath. Oh, bro. Karate Chop does about a quarter HP and Polyrath uses Mind Reader. I wanted to switch out, but Star Platinum's resolve was too strong. So he hits with another Karate Chop. Something about, I don't know, wanting to taste defeat. Polyrath winds up a dynamic punch and Machoke readily braces for impact. It lands as a critical hit but he takes it like a champ. But of course, confused and winded, I veto Machoke's yearn for defeat and switch to Quandale. Which, by the way, was an amazing call because Polyrath lands another dynamic punch, but Quandale didn't even seem to notice. After we confuse it and let Polyrath beat itself up, we finish it with a leech life, winning us the battle. We light up Shiny Gyarados and help Lance out one more time to take down Team Rocket, evolving Star Platinum and Jonah Hill in the process. Price is up next, and looking at our team and the fact that he is the worst type in the game's roster, we both knew he stood no chance. We set up Amnesia and brush off an icy wind, then proceed to shred through his entire team using just Earthquake. As we made our way to the final Johto Gym, we grinded some XP by saving the region from Team Rocket or something, and it made me realize how proud I was of the team. No deaths, no complications, and 100% effort from all of the members. And hey, having a Raichu for the League this time around wouldn't suck, but I kinda got attached to having Light as a Pikachu, it gave me real Ash Ketchum vibes. Anyway, after getting stuck in this absolutely badass ice cave for about an hour and a half, I put the square peg in the square hole and figured out the boulder puzzle designed for 10 year old children and made my way to Claire's hometown. But then I had an idea. Every time I play these games, I forget my mother leeches my bank account for my savings and that I would be loaded if I withdrew it. If she still has it, that is. God, who knew Pokemon could be so nostalgic? Oh wow, Grandma! Thanks! 20 whole dollars! Let me hold on to that for you, son, so you don't lose it! Hey, Mom, I need that 20 dollars for my birthday. What 20? You know, my birthday money. See, that's, that's what's funny, son. Your money! You already spent it! What? No, I didn't. Bro, come on, give me my 20, please! See those lights over your head? See that sink running? See that AC blowing? Ma, air conditioning is a major factor in climate change. Shut up! Shut up! That's where your money went! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <sighs> Good times. Luckily though, my in-game mom didn't spend it all, so I took it out, turned it all to Bitcoin, and blew it on a CD. What CD, you may ask? Thunder. Because I evolved Pikachu a little too soon to get it naturally. So now we were heading to the latter half of the run with a juiced up Raichu, with power the likes of which we've never seen before in any previous leg. Seeing Lightso powered up in her brand new form inspired Slicer X and caused him to evolve into Kabutops. Now the team was all fully evolved, and we gathered in front of Claire's gym. We had come a long way but it was time to put Johto behind us. We challenge Claire and lead the Slicer X. We use Icy Wind, but don't get lucky like last leg. We avoid a Thunder Wave and KO Dragonair 1. The second falls in a similar fashion, but we get paralyzed and struck by Thunderbolt. We get hit with Dragon Breath and stay paralyzed, but after another, we connect and hit Icy Wind. We take a risk and let one more connect, bringing us to red. But Slicer X pulls through as always and KOs. Kingdra's out next, so it's everyone else's turn to fight. Ronaldo takes two surfs, but lands a flash. Crazy value, I know. I switch to Light, who dodges a surf as she hits Thunder Wave, but throws an absolute brick of a thunder and misses. Kingdra hits a smoke scream, but it's not matter. And we connect the thunder. Surf misses, then thunder. Then hyper beam. Then thunder, then hyper beam. Jesus, thank you, thunder, okay. We defeat Claire and get denied our final badge. So of course we gotta go out to her wacky Zen Garden and talk to the Dragon Masters of all two Dragon type species and accept our badge. I was excited. I was blessed by the elders, acknowledged by Claire, and ready to blitz this Pokemon League. Before I entered the League, I gave my Pokemon items, which I didn't really do in the previous legs because, well, Gen 1 not having held items, and the further you go back in generations, the less held items there are to go around. So I slapped some cloud on my team, and this is what I got. Slicer X with the Never Melt Ice for today. Light, rocking the amulet coin, 100% genuine. You shit fake, nigga! You don't got it! You do not! Jonah Hill with the charcoal vote today. Ronaldo with the mystic water drip. Star Platinum with the quick claw quickness. And Crobat donning the sharp beak. 
With our new drip and old resolve, we head on forward into the league and challenge our first opponent. Will is up first and we use Slicer X's rollout to take Zatu out in two hits while tanking a Psychic. We thankfully miss our next rollout so we weren't trapped with a 4 times super effective grass type, and take our slap on the wrist via Psychic and switch out to Jonah Hill, who eats a Psychic and incinerates Exeggutor like it's Maui. Too soon? Too soon, I'm, I'm sorry Maui. We smoke screen slow bro as it uses amnesia and counterattacks, but we switch to light and end up KOing using thunder, only taking one psychic in the process. We paralyze, dodge the Riz, and switch to Ronaldo. We set up two amnesias, fall asleep, and upon Ronaldo's rude awakening, he bulldozes the Jinx with an EQ. Zatu's out last, and we're trading flashes for psychics, but getting confused in the process and hefty damage being done. We use our healing item, and after a few more flashes, we take down Zatu in two serves. Hogue is up next, and we take down Eridos with a flamethrower and switch to Ronaldo for Muck. We use amnesia and then earthquake, but Muck then uses minimize and starts spamming. Sludge Bomb. I swear, Muck is always such a huge troll whenever we encounter it, whether it's on our team or the enemies. We finally hit our EQ though and proceed to spam it some more to take down Venomoth and Fortress. We then add Crobat versus Slicer X, and this was a stall fest. Double teams, missed attacks, toxic, ugh. I ended up just switching to Jonah Hill to secure the KO. Now it was time for Bruno, and we fall for the same goddamn <laughs> trick again! God damn it, kill it! Kill it now! Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, Absorb makes quick work of Onyx, and we switch to Mr. Hill for Hitmonlee. And then Hitmonlee proceeds to combo Gangnam Style swagger on us, high jump kick us, and then we beat ourselves up. Then he kicks us twice for good measure, and we end it with a classic EQ. Hitmonchan comes out, so we use a max potion to prepare. It hits us with a mock punch, but Earthquake quickly KOs. Champ comes out, and I realize I have run out of Earthquake, so I use a few flashes, and Machamp fails cross chops, but one finally connects, but we flash again anyway. At first, I was doing it to lower accuracy, but <laughs> shit, now I'm just kind of doing it for fun. After sufficient blinding, I switched to Star Platinum for a totally fair competition of who's Machamp better. We had a cross chop in Oko, the poor blinded beast, and Bruno walks away defeated. At this point, I was getting bored of the Elite Four, like, come on, red solos, I've beaten y'all twice already, get a move on! We send out Star Platinum and some karate chops do away Umbreon, and then we start using Fire Punch for Vile Plume, which, funnily enough, this Vile Plume is really the only reason I got Fire Punch, just to make this battle more convenient. Even though it still costed us some health in Machamp's legs, we won the exchange and used Fire Punch after Gengar used Curse. Gengar gets burned, but we take curse damage, and I don't know what this Gengar is capable of, so I switch to light. Gengar dodges thunder, but succumbs to its injuries. Houndoom's out next, and we switch to Ronaldo after getting smoked by Flamethrower. A few surfs later, and it's down. For some reason, she saved Murkrow for last, so we absolutely plucked it and called it a day. We sprinted to Lance because of how ready we were to play Gen 3 and challenged him one last time. It's Gyarados versus Light, but this time she's much stronger than before. We paralyze and sweet kiss Dragonite, and then switch over to Slicer X. Dragonite breaks free from confusion to paralyzed, and we KO with two Icy Winds. The next Dragonite hits us with a crit Hyper Beam, but Slicer X holds his ground and hits back with Icy Wind, and finishes the job on Dragonite's recharge turn. Charizard's out next, and it hits us with Wing Attack. Now, I could stay in, but I wanted to play it safe, so I switched to Ronaldo as we tank some slashes, set up Amnesia, and use Surf, getting the Zard to 1 HP. We use our healing item at the perfect timing because Charizard hit us with Hyper Beam, and we use the Recharge turn to KO with Surf. Dragonite's out, and we start spamming Flash, ignoring whatever baby brain moves they were hitting us with. We switch to Light, and somehow Dragonite connects a Hyper Beam, which gets us to low yellow. We paralyze on Recharge turn and switch to Star Platinum and start spamming Strength against Outrage. After like 21 strengths, we KO Dragonite and Lance's final Pokemon, Aerodactyl, comes out. I knew we had to switch, but I realized everyone on our team had gotten low on HP and I couldn't stay into Machamp, but at the same time, both Pokemon at full HP were Flying types, so I had to make the decision about which Flying type would have more of a chance of survival, and I picked Jonah Hill. Which may seem super dumb, because he's four times weak to rock, but I figured Aerodactyl wouldn't use Rock Slide upon Switch because Star Platinum is a fighting type, and Jonah Hill had Smoke Screen, so he could lower accuracy and use Fly to win, while Crobat could use Confuse Ray, but I've usually had better results with Accuracy Cheese. So I sent out Jonah Hill, and he gets hit by a Wing Attack, and I use Smoke Screen, but Aerodactyl outspeeds, and lands a Rock Slide, killing Jonah Hill. At this point, I started getting really scared. I actually feared the end of the run. I switched to Slicer X, who thankfully tanked a Rock Slide despite low HP, but flinched and had to tank another. He survives on a single HP, but is paralyzed, so we had to switch again to Ronaldo. Our options had run dry, and at this point, I was ready to start stacking Mons just to have a chance at victory. Ronaldo tanks a Rock Slide, dodges a Hyper Beam, and lands Surf, getting Aerodactyl to red. Aerodactyl uses Hyper Beam, misses, and we end the battle with a final Surf. I take a deep breath and step away from my keyboard. 
That battle went from good to bad to worse. I thought we were killing it, but Lance had strategically chipped down my whole team's health in order to almost checkmate me and rob us of a powerful and valuable team member. We even almost lost both Slicer X and Ronaldo. It was devastating to our morale. We took our walk to the Hall of Fame and buckled up because Teen Spizzles was about to lead Johto and take on Kanto as a team of five. Well, six, because I'm a team player, guys, okay? I'm a member too. All right, cue the dream music. We're speed running Kanto, getting those badges, and getting the out of Gen 2. They buffed Lieutenant Surge's team, but we swept with Earthquake anyway. We slash away Espeon and one tap Mr. Mime, Alakazam Reflex, and Psychic's Ronaldo, who sets up Amnesia. We get hit again and pop off another Amnesia. We tank one more and spam EQ till KO. Quandale warmed up by sweeping all of Erica's underlings and then spammed Leech Life until Tangela was sucked dry. Pause. And then Jump Pluck, Blossom, and Victory Bell all get dunked on by Fly. Janine's next on the hit list and we Oko Crobat with Crit Thunder and the rest of her team also calls to Thunder. Misty's Golduck is up next and we Oko with Thunder and switch to Quandale for Quagsire. We confuse Ray and switch to Slicer X who uses Slash and Giga Drain to KO. We tank a Surf and Giga Drain Star Me to restore health and switch to Light who also tanks a Surf and KOs with a Thunder. Star Platinum's out for Lapras and it eats a blizzard like it's Dairy Queen and KOs with a crit cross job. Brock's lover, I, I mean student, stops us in our tracks, but Star Platinum makes quick work of him. Star Platinum sweeps Brock and we're off to Blade, who's swept by Ronaldo. We walk up to Blue and challenge him for a final time. We use Rollout to KO Pidgeot and we do hefty damage to Executor. It charges the terrifying Solar Beam, but we KO with our next Rollout. Alakazam uses Reflect, but Rollout is simply too powerful and we Oko. Rhydon's up next, and we Oko with Giga Drain, and then hit Arcanine with an onslaught of rollouts. Except, he uses Roar and sends out Star Platinum and uses this opportunity to heal. But no matter, because Star Platinum KOs in two cross chops. Gyarados gets hit with a cross chop, but we miss our next one, resulting in two Hydro Pumps connecting back to back. We switch to Ronaldo, but only get a single flash off before having to switch out again. Gyarados misses what I'm pretty sure was his last Hydro Pump, and we land Thunder and finish our final Gen 2 gym battle with Light. Our team was ready to get the hell out of Johto, and we were definitely ready to leave Kanto, so we made our way back up to Mount Silver and to the peak from which Red sat. To be honest, whether I win or lose this fight, I basically won. I basically won because, like, best of three, you know? I, it's already too late for this man. I've thought six steps ahead already. I took one final look at the team that brought me this far, and we dedicated this fight to Jonah Hill. Uh, uh the, the Pokemon Jonah Hill, guys. The Pokemon. The Pokemon Jonah Hill. Yeesh, maybe that death was perfect timing. And, uh, and we challenged Red to a final Gen 2 throwdown. I decide if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and send out Slicer X against Pikachu and Oko with Ancient Power. Five left to go. Espeon's out next, and we get hit with a Psychic, but KO and two Ancient Powers. Four left to go. Venusaur is out next, and we use Icy Wind, doing about a quarter health, but it charges a Solar Beam, so we decide to switch out to Quandale, who tanks the blow and uses Fly while Sunny Day is set up. He comes down and KOs with a crit. Three left to go. We use Confused Ray on Snorlax and set up Amnesia. Our next cross chop lands and KOs regardless of the boosted stats. Two left to go. Charizard's out next, but Star Platinum gives zero fucks and braces for a wing attack and hits back with a cross chop, landing a crit. I decide to switch though and allow Light to tank a wing attack and finish Charizard off with Thunder. One to go. Blastoise is out next and we miss a Thunder. But the world's best trainer sees I have Thunder in my arsenal and proceeds to use Rain Dance, which guarantees a connection. So we oblige and Light KOs Red's final Pokemon and wins us Saga 2. Uh, it's It's been great guys. I've really loved this series so far and I'm excited to see where it goes for Gen 3. We're gonna have an entirely new overlay, new graphics and gameplay features like abilities and natures, and it's gonna be an all around great time. If you have any suggestions to change the rules, to you know make this run a little harder, I'd be happy to hear them. Thanks for everyone who's watched up until now. It means a lot to me, and uh, I'll see you guys in Hoenn. Bye.